me is an ex-abandoned property and today we're cleaning it up. Today's project holds really special to me because it involves my great grandpa Bill. I never got to meet my great grandpa Bill because he passed away 25 years before I was born, but I've heard a lot of stories about him. I guess my great grandpa was known for searching the entire country to find mules. He was looking for ugly mules. He was looking for ones that did not even bring close to top dollar because what he would do is he would bring them home, he would work with them, he would train them, he would get them nice and strong, he would groom them, clean them up, and he'd turn that pack of ugly looking mules into a premium set. And then he'd turn around and sell them. And he'd continually do that. And he did that so much and he was so successful with it that he was able to buy 800 acres of farmland in central Iowa, which is some of the very best soil on the entire planet. Before he passed away, he ended up selling his 800 acres to his five kids. My grandpa bought the farm I live on. The farm right across the road, my grandpa's sister bought that. And the soil that I'm sitting on right now, my great uncle Orlin, my grandpa's brother, bought this piece. So today we are bringing a chunk of soil that has been in my family for almost 100 years back into production. It used to be abandoned. We got everything cleaned up. So today we're gonna be walking around this. We're gonna find all the chunks of concrete that didn't get buried. We're gonna find all the rocks that got brought up. If there's any pieces of metal sitting on the surface. We're gonna pick everything up, get everything smoothed off. And here in just a couple months, we're gonna be farming this. Today is going to be something that has never happened for us. We are going to have four generations on the farm. And that is because this is my son. This is Edward. He's seven months old. He's going to be helping today. And then when we surprise Uncle Orlin with getting the farm cleaned up later, he's going to be out there too. So we're going to have everybody running around. Sounds like Edward's going to be doing some skid loader driving later. He's going to be riding in it. <laughs> so this is going to be his first day out working on the farm. You excited, buddy? Just us emocionadas. See? Ooh. Oh, hey, you're, you're blocking yourself. You know, if they planted all the way up to roads with like sweet corn, you could just be driving down the road and you could just reach out your window quick and grab an ear. The sacredge, it's about five acres or the size of five football fields. The hard part is when we have weeds this tall, where do we start? And how do we keep making sure that we're going into new areas constantly and not staying in the same spot? So we're gonna to try to break this up in grids, maybe, or we're just gonna go back. We're just gonna go back and forth and keep stirring stuff up. Actually, it looks really clean. Let's just go home. First round through, we're basically just gonna knock these weeds down, maybe rustle some stuff up that's half buried, and then we'll also be able to see a little bit better. We'll pick it up, we'll probably do it again. Ooh, got a nice chunk of stuff there. We're a couple hours in. We have officially hit the halfway point. So from here up to the road, that has been scoured, walked through. Now we just have here over. Hey, your trailer, it flipped down. The loser didn't clamp his trailer down. Now the thing is, we just got done with the easy part because that used to be field and then like building started kind of where we are now. So now we're getting into the old foundation area Ron pretty much dug holes right next to the foundations and just kind of shoved it right into the hole next to the foundation. 
So there shouldn't be a lot, but if we're gonna find stuff, it's gonna be over here. Little things like this, this is a fence post. It's hard enough, I can't pull it out, but Cole will pull it out with his bucket. See, he's gonna try to get that out. Admiring your eye beams, are you? Yes. Them are nice. Them are like gold. What are we gonna do with them? We're gonna put them out in the driveway so people can go by and look at them and think, I wish I had eye beams that size. I felt like our ancestors today. Now I know how great grandpa Bill felt when he was out with his mules and plowing fields. Oh yeah, with a little skid loader bucket on the big area. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's working good though. It really is. We're gaining. What is that grasshopper doing? Sitting behind you. Don't you eat grasshoppers? What kind of bird are you? Do you speak English? Why are you answering my questions? Yesterday, Cooper was not able to help us because he was getting his second cutting of hay off. He got done with that. So we're gonna have his help today. So we should get done a lot faster because when Cooper's there, things go smooth and you get a lot done. But before I go finish cleaning up Uncle Orland's, dad and I have an appointment at the Farm Service Agency office. We have to certify our corn acres and we have to certify our soybean acres and we got to get all of our license plate registration stuff at the courthouse. And Dad told me he was going to be here 20 minutes ago, and I have not heard anything from him. Whew. Okay. No. Hey, Coop, did you call? Yeah, I was trying to see if I should go get the mask here or not yet, but I'll wait till you guys are down here and we get going on it. Okay, they got her done? No, he hasn't worked on it yet. He's waiting for parts. Oh. Shoot, okay. Well, he might have tore in and found some things then. Our plans of leaving at 8.30 this morning, getting everything done and back home by 10.30 is only off by two hours. It's 12.30 and we still gotta go to the courthouse. That's it, we're doing really good. I'm gonna put some diesel in the skid loader. Okay, okay. Is there any diesel in those barrels or do I gotta get it out of the fuel trailer? Unless you just wanna take it out a little of that today to get you going. Okay. FSA office and courthouse always takes longer than you think. Those barrels do not have any diesel in them at all right now. The rest of our diesel fuel is in the fuel trailer, which is in the big machine shed. And I don't know how buried it is right now. Oh, fairly, I can't get to that. Okay, we're gonna have to put road fuel in. There's two different types of diesel fuel. There's red fuel and there's yellow fuel. Yellow fuel is what's used on the road. Any diesel vehicle you see driving down a highway, has this. This has a tax on it, a fuel tax. And then in these other barrels, we have the red diesel fuel or the farm diesel fuel that is fuel tax exempt. So we get that for a cheaper price, but we cannot run it over the road. So this is solely used in off-road stuff, so tractors, skid loader, all that kind of stuff. But since we can't get to that right now, we're putting in the more expensive fuel. We don't need to fill it full. We'll just put us in enough to get by until we can get the fuel trailer out. We're just trying to get running since we don't have very much time today. <sighs> Ooh, nice chunk right there. And here comes the rain, but we are gonna welcome the rain because we need it. As much as I would like to get Uncle Orland's farm cleaned up, I was kind of hoping we would have got rained out today. We have moisture in the soil, but we're getting close to tassel time, which is when the plant needs a lot. So we could use a really nice rain. We got basically enough to just kind of knock the dust down. So I guess now we're not gonna be working in a bunch of dust today, which is gonna be nice. There's our rain gauge in the bucket. That's what we got. <laughs> Two hours and eight skid loader buckets of rocks, nails, glass, roots, you name it, we found it. We are now ready to grab the cultivator and stir up some more stuff. Based off what we did on the front, we found 50% of the stuff we found the first time 
after we cultivated it. So if that's the case, we'll have four more skid loader buckets over here. Oh boy. Get the muffler cap off. Like we've just been collecting little piles of rocks <laughs> there's a bunch of them it's the four hour later update we've been making good progress dad and i just walked through everything again we probably have more piles this time than we did the first time so i'm we'll say seven skid loader buckets it's a lot of rocks and bricks about that big that's basically all i've been finding rocks and bricks a couple big chunks of tree branch. Oh, we got boss man driving today. There you go, buddy. Push him. Push him. <laughs> he's so serious. Yeah, he's but serious because he's learning. No, he's like, get to work. <laughs> like, what are you guys doing just standing there? Get to work. It's so like, this one makes it go. That's the horn. This is the hydraulic auxiliaries. Yeah. I got to learn how to do the bucket one. Yeah, but my arm's not long enough to reach over there. Oh boy, they're getting everybody in there. He's got from right here all the way up to the road done now. So we just got from here over to the corn. I think we've done five skid loader bucket fulls. And these ones are a lot tighter because everything is really small. Not like small, small, but everything lays pretty flat inside of there. So you can pack them pretty tight. Hey, ain't bad. We gotta pay attention where we're going, buddy, so we don't run anybody over. We got a pretty good chunk done today. It takes a lot longer to pick that stuff up than a guy thinks. What have we done now? Three rounds on the front half, two on the back? Yes, yes. What do you think, Mama Corn Stars? It looking pretty clean? For now. Do yeah. I look clean? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Filthy animal. Come out here in new clothes. Wasn't a good idea. Oh, that wasn't very bright. No. Don't you remember the kids when they were little? Like, change your clothes, put your work clothes on. I didn't know I'd be working. If you're ever around us, you know you're going to be working. I should know better. She doesn't. By the time I end up going down to the main heated shop, getting a bolt coming back, it is going to be dark. Something I've been trying to work on a little bit is getting to bed at a decent time so that way I can get up and just get moving because I tend to work till midnight, one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, and then my body wants to wake up at six in the morning as soon, basically as soon as the light comes in through the window. And that short sleep in the short run, I can do it just fine. I can, I've been doing it for years, but from a health perspective and a longevity perspective, that is something I need to address. So I'm just going to call it an early nine o'clock night. Ooh, let's see if we can find something to plug that hole. We need to clean this building out. I know. Before we move half the earth row in there, I got a place I want to look. There, that's the one. That almost looks about the right size. Cutter key. Where would one of those be? I'm tempted to rob Peter to pay Paul, but I don't want to do that. Oh, how could you be so rusty? Oh. We did it. We robbed Peter. Peter's been robbed. Before you get too crazy doing anything, you always make sure it fits. It does. It does fit.
project like this is pretty incredible because you look at it and you think, oh, that's not gonna take very long. We're gonna have all these people working on it. We're gonna get it done in no time. We have had help from Dad and Cooper, but we've also had it where it's just been me and Dad. And then we have it in cases where it's just me. I basically did an entire walkthrough on this by myself. I probably have half an acre left. It's getting really hard to see right now. I'm looking forward to getting this done. And something I've been trying to do is when I'm working on a project, finish that project before we jump to the next one because it's so easy to do the fun part of a project and then you have it half done and then something comes up, a boring part, or maybe you hit a little roadblock. And so then you start looking around and you're like, oh, low hanging fruit project over there. You get started on that one, you hit the roadblock there. And then you look over, oh, low hanging fruit there. And then by the time you do that 10 times, now you have 10 projects that are half started and you don't get them done. And then you just don't wanna go back to them because you're looking at other low hanging fruit. So it's a really bad habit. And that's something I'm trying to break. So this is one of them. While we have stuff down here, we're just gonna work on it and we're gonna get it done. And then once it's completely done, then we can move on to the next thing. This way, we're actually getting done what we're telling ourselves we're gonna get done. And I feel like that does a lot for our confidence as well. Because if we're truthful to what we say we're going to do, now we believe ourselves. Because if we don't, then technically, we're lying to ourselves and we don't believe what we say. I got a little sunburn on my face yesterday, so we're going assassin mask, sunglasses, boonie hat. Ugh. Put the water jug in the refrigerator here. We're getting a lot cleared out because Ron dug us a 12 foot deep hole to throw all the pieces of wood and bricks and everything else we find. We had to burn it because it's getting too full. You ever been in a sauna? That's what I'm in right now. I'm in our old Massey four-wheel drive tractor. The air conditioning ain't working. Our neighbor Scott, he's working on it, but he had to order some parts. We decided to use the tractor today. I'm running the disc back here. Oh, the disc back here. Oh. Just trying to kind of work it a little deeper. Pull out rocks, anything like that, debris. We're gonna walk it again. It's debris like that we have to pick up. We have another another big load you think you about got it and then you go another five feet and there's a whole bunch more but it's got to be picked up oh last load wow like it again well that's a big rock look at that wow hey look at him go and actually i feel really bad for coal right now it's about 90 degrees out there is no air moving. And I'm not even gonna mention right now, I got cold air blowing on me. But you know, that's one thing I do. Cole and Cooper, they both know when there's work to be done, we get it done and the guy can complain all he wants, but it's still there, so you might as well just do it. And if it gets too hot, you know, if we have to walk away for a little while, we can do that. I could honk my horn every two minutes to call, get them all jumping around. I'm like, what now, Dad? I guess if I forgot to tell you guys, this skid loader has really, really nice air conditioning. Has a nice spot for Ellie to take a little nap also. All right, Cole, quit looking, quit looking, no more. Hey, 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 you going the wrong way? <laughs> oh. Too bad that little critter couldn't drive and I could take a nap. Cooper and Levi were just trying to pull that root out. I didn't get the camera out quick enough, but uh, the root broke off and put Cooper on the ground. <laughs> Look at Cooper's back. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I told you, I am bad at looking at a project and saying, that's how long it's gonna take. I was thinking, okay, in my head, we should be able to have this done in a day. And I know in my head, it's always wrong. So I double it. And then I'm like, hmm, that's always wrong too. So I triple it, three days. So what I should have done is taken those three days, my, my original triple, and then doubled that, six days. Ah, no 
you uh -oh. what's wrong with it. Now that we got all this done, this is the best part. We're gonna surprise Uncle Merlin because he has no idea. So on the cameras I use, there is a microphone jack that comes in on the side. And when I went to go pick up Uncle Orlin, I must have bumped the microphone jack, unplugging it. So. <laughs> How are Hi, you Doris. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'll take him away for a couple hours. That way you can, you can get some peace and quiet. <laughs> all right, we all good? Yeah. Unfortunately, my entire afternoon with Uncle Orlin sounds just like this, but I was able to get his reaction on film so he can at least see. He's very stoic, so you're not gonna see a lot of smiles, but he was pleased. Take a look. <laughs> we missed a piece. I missed it last night, but our neighbor Steve came over with his drill and he seeded this entire thing down with rye. So now we have five acres of rye. I guess we're getting to try our little cover crops a bit. This is gonna be sitting idle for a few months. So instead of having a bunch of weeds and stuff growing in it, we figured we might as well have it to rye. Who knows, it might even get tall enough where Cooper can get a cutting of hay off of it. We are going to have a waterway that runs from right there in the gap in the corn over down to that other waterway. And then there's one just in front of the pickup truck here that there's a culvert that runs under the road. And so then that'll tee right into that as well. But the rest, once we get this first crop of rye off of it, it is going to go into corn and soybean production. If you made it to this part of the video, thank you for joining us on everything we got done this week. It's been an incredible week. Being able to get projects done like this that are lifetime dream projects for me, it's humbling. And if it weren't for you guys, this stuff wouldn't be happening because your guys' support is what helps us be able to fund projects like this. And we want to do projects like this because they are fun videos to make and I hope you guys get enjoyment out of them. I do have a quick announcement. We have Cornstar Farms merch that is going discontinued. Our old logo is going to be no more. So if you want to pick up old logo merch, once it's gone, it is gone. So I'd head down to the link in the description now if you want to get it, because once it's gone, it is never coming back. But that's all we got for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.